So we talked about parceling out via post lasso. But the legitimate question here is why post lasso? Why can't we use in step one and step two something else, like any machine learning algorithm, in order to get the prediction residuals? And then run an OLS for prediction errors of Y on the prediction errors of D. So double machine learning is a generalization of the double selection procedure that we saw before. And sometimes this double machine learning estimator is called also a double prediction estimator. We look at it as setting where you have a partially linear regression, where you have an outcome equation where the treatment effect enters linearly, but all the rest can be very nonlinear with respect to control variables. We are interested in parameter beta zero, which have an average treatment effect interpretation thanks to the assumption of conditional dependence, or in simple words, we assume that treatment is exogenous as long as we condition on the control variables in a correct way. We call the function J0 and M0 as nuisance functions. Why? Because they capture the relationship between the nuisance parameters and the outcome or the treatment. So double device machine learning estimator has three steps. We use machine learning to predict Y from Z and we get the prediction errors. We use machine learning to predict D from Z and we get the prediction errors for the treatment. And then we regress the residuals on residuals or prediction errors on prediction errors to get treatment effect. Yeah, by machine learning algorithm, I mean it can be rich, it can be lasso, it can be neural network, it can be random forest or whatever. The estimator in question has the usual form and um, what we care about is that this estimator is unbiased. We can actually estimate what the bias would be in expectation. Expected bias will have three terms, A, B and C. The first term disappears if the following condition is satisfied. And this condition is satisfied by our conditional independence assumption. If treatment is as good as random after we control for nuisance parameters, we also know that this would be true. The second term disappears if the systematic part of the prediction error so basically how we approximate the true data generating process for, for D and how well we approximate our data generating process for Y. If these errors in approximations are uncorrelated, then the second term will also disappear. What do we mean by data generating process? So we have Y and we have D and both have some kind of relationship with the nuisance parameters. And if we pl plot this data generating process, which is the black line, for example, it looks like this. What we will be trying to do with our machine learning algorithm is to approximate this data generating process. And for example, we approximate it with, with this green line for Y and with this green line for D. And in the end, what we care about is that this difference between green line and the black line or the approximation error is uncorrelated with the approximation error that we estimate for treatment. The third component of the bias includes this term, and it will not disappear if this term is not equal to zero. This part is called bias induced by overfitting or overfitting bias. In order to guarantee that this term is zero, we cannot estimate beta coefficient on the same sample on which you fit the functional forms for G and M. It means that we need to split our data into two halves. On the first half, we train G and M, the two machine learners. And on the second part, we estimate the final LS. In other words, the estimate for beta should be estimated using out of sample predictions. And here comes the idea of cross-fitting. If we split our data into half, making a training data and estimation data, we get our first estimate of beta hat 1, and then we switch the rows and we use the second half to train data and the, the first part to estimate our second estimator. And guess what we are doing next? We just estimate the cross-fitted estimator by taking the average between the two. 
So this idea is very much close to what we do with uh, cross-validation. In cross-validation, remember, we compare how well our machine learning algorithm does out of sample in order to avoid overfitting. Here, the idea is the same or similar. We fit our models on one sample and then the final part we do only on a separate untouched uh, sample. 